Hey, what is up guys, and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to build this Japanese style water mill. One thing to note before we begin is that the water wheel itself is going to dip one block below the water's surface. So you'll want to find a location on the river where the water is at least two blocks deep. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Kicking things off at the side facing the river, grab some spruce wood planks and place four of these one block away from the water's edge with three block gaps in between. Then, shifting counterclockwise, place two more planks with gaps that are the same size. Next, simply mirror that same pattern for the front and right side of the build. Moving back to the front, place two more spruce planks each three blocks away from the ones we just put down. And finish off the foundation by placing four more planks in the center of the build in the shape of a square. After that, take out some crimson planks and place down four block tall pillars on top of every single one of the spruce planks. Once that's done, connect all of the three block gaps on the outside with a crossbeam. Moving on to the second level of the build, start by raising the four pillars in the center by an additional four blocks. Then do the same thing for the four pillars that make up the extension on the front of the build. After that, move to the left and place two more four block tall pillars with a three block gap in between and then mirror that same thing on the opposite side. Then, just like we did on the first floor, connect all of the gaps on the outside with a crossbeam. To finish off the frame of the build, start by placing two block tall pillars in the center of each three block gap. Then, connect them with a crossbeam. When that's done, fill in the entire first floor with spruce wood slabs. When it comes to the walls, Starting with the side facing the water, kick things off by filling in the center gap with stone bricks, remembering to leave one block open in the middle for the wheel. Then, fill in the remaining two walls with white wool. Moving counterclockwise, leave the first gap open for a door, and place a single row of white wool in the second gap so you have space for a window. Then, do the same thing on the following wall, and leave the walls of the extension completely open. Next, set the space on the right up for another window, and then for the last side, Leave the first gap open for a door, and set the second gap up for a window. Moving up, fill in that first opening completely, and then for the back side, only fill in the first two layers so that you have some space for vents. Then fill in the gap on the other side, and make room for another vent in the following space. For the extension, you're going to have two full walls on the left, a space for a window in the front, and then two more full walls on the right and that last opening will be a space for another vent. To make the first door, simply place down a 2x3 section of birch trapdoors, remembering to do the same thing on the other side once you're done. Then go ahead and fill in all the window spaces with acacia trapdoors, including that opening on the second floor. Once that's finished, take out some crimson fences, and use them to fill in all the spaces that we left open for vents. After that, take out some crimson stairs and give the extension some more detail by placing two of these under each crossbeam. Moving on to the roof, start by placing a row of dark prismarine along the lower crossbeam nearest the river, with a one block overhang on both sides. Then add a row of prismarine slabs with a lip under each overhang so that we can add an additional row of slabs one half block down. Making our way up, add another row of slabs with a lip, but leave the spaces under each vent open so that we can fill them in with prismarine stairs. After that, fill in the opening with some white wool and then copy the same design for the two spaces on the front of the build. So once again, that's going to be a row of full blocks, followed by two rows of half slabs sloping down, and another row of half slabs and stairs on the top. And don't forget to fill in the opening with the white wool.
To connect the two sides together, simply alternate with full blocks and half slabs until you reach the middle. Then go back down on the other side. And remember to do the same thing on the other half of the build. When that's done, add a double row of slabs, one block from the end, and drag that over until you reach the other side. Then add another double row on top of that, and one more single row of slabs to finish it off. For the opposite side of the build, just repeat those same exact steps. For the second floor roof, start by placing a row of prismarine above the T-shaped crossbeam with a one block overhang on all three sides. The next layer down will be very similar, but will instead be made out of stairs. For the third layer, simply continue that same pattern, but make sure you switch back to your full blocks. Then, just like we did on the lower roof, add a layer of slabs with a lip on the end, and continue that around all three sides. When that's done, wrap it up by placing one final layer of prismarine slabs. After that, make sure you smooth out the end of each roof with two half slabs in a full block, and then fill in any openings you see with white wool. For the roof design, it's gonna be a stair, followed by a full block, then two more stairs with the second one facing the opposite direction on top. Next, place down two half slabs, followed by single slabs with a one block gap in between until you reach the edge. After that, just repeat that same design two more times. Now, to give each roof a little more detail, we can place some upside down stairs beneath each overhang. One thing to note for these is that for the symmetrical sides, you'll want to start by placing a half slab in the center, and then place the stairs facing opposite directions on both sides. Now that the roof is finished, we can get started on the deck. So, kicking things off on the right side, place down four spruce planks, each separated by a gap of three. Then moving clockwise, place one more separated by a gap of one. In the front of the extension, place two more with a gap of three, and then mirror that same exact pattern on the other side. When that's done, simply fill in the empty space with spruce slabs. Then, go ahead and place a row of three more slabs in front of each entrance. To make the foundation for the water wheel, start by placing four stone brick pillars on the outside of each spruce plank. Then remove any blocks in between, and replace them with stone bricks until you're left with a two block tall space. After that, fill in that extra opening with a row of upright stairs, followed by a row of upside down stairs on top. Next, go ahead and place an upside down stair and a full block on the end of each side, and then add a row of stone brick slabs on top. For the water wheel, starting from the empty space in the wall, place 10 spruce wood logs extending out over the water. Then on the fourth block over from the wall, add four spokes that are each three blocks in length. When that's done, place a single spruce plank on the end of each spoke. After that, add three more planks on each side so that you're left with a sort of H shape. To connect each spoke together, simply alternate using normal facing and upside down stairs until each gap is bridged, and continue using the same technique for each space. Once that's finished, we'll create four more diagonal spokes to give the wheel some more support. Each one of these will be made out of four alternating stairs moving towards the outside of the wheel. When those are done, place a slab on the bottom of each stair on the top half of the wheel, and then do the opposite for the bottom half of the wheel. To form the main support for the wheel, 
Start by placing a stone brick one block away from the end of the axle on both sides. Then place two stairs on top of those, followed by two half slabs in the middle, and fill in the remaining space underneath with stone bricks. After that, place some spruce trapdoors around the part of the axle directly left and right of the stone brick support. Then place a spruce button on the end. For the inside of the build, start by extending the axle by an additional six blocks and place another spruce button on the end. Then place a row of stone bricks below that, followed by two stairs and a half slab on top. Next, place another set of spruce trapdoors around the parts of the axle that are closest to the stone bricks. After that, create a three x three hole in the ground and fill it with sand to look like grain. Then add a spruce fence pillar in the center to act as a grinder. While we're at it, another thing you can do is add in some sandstone slabs to make it look like the grain is piling up. Once that's done, we can begin cleaning up the interior by placing a crossbeam and two upside down stairs between each of the central pillars. Following that, take out some spruce slabs and fill in the 3x7 space above the door on the left, and then do the same thing for the door over on the right. Next, place a crimson plank connecting the front extension to the central pillars, and fill in the space above that with spruce slabs. Then take out some ladders, and use these to give yourself a way up to each of these three storage areas. After those are in, place down some crimson fences around the openings, as well as a few lanterns on the ceiling to give yourself some light. Coming back down to the first floor, use some crimson planks to connect the central pillars to the outside wall, then fill in the space in between with spruce slabs. For some additional lighting, you can also throw in a few lanterns around the first floor. If you want to keep the build looking fairly industrial, you can simply leave it how it is right now. However, if you're looking for a bit of extra detail, you can add in a couple planters boxes by placing down a row of grass under the front window, surrounded by dark spruce trapdoors with vegetation on top. And personally, I would do this on both sides. And there you have it, your very own Japanese style watermill. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully you found the tutorial helpful, and as always, I will see you in the next one.